You ever have one of those days where absolutely nothing works out like you want it to? Yeah, I got balls, no siren. I got balls, don't you listen to me? Hello, 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 and welcome to The Author Has Thoughts. I am the author in question, Gary Ballard. If this is your first time on the channel, I'm gonna to link to the introduction video, but just a little summary. I am a self-published author. I've written 12 novels, and I am here on this channel promoting my work, uh, but also doing podcasty, vloggy type stuff where I can expound on my thoughts about politics, entertainment, media, whatever other thoughts pop into my pointy little head. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it will let you know when there's a new video, uh, which is going to be important because of what I'm talking about today. So now it's been a while since I put out a video. Uh, part of that was that I switched the place where I've been recording before, which left me less room to record and I, I couldn't really leave my stuff up. I tried a few videos in this setup, but I didn't really like the way it was working, recorded a few, um, but I, I felt like in a corner and, and the lighting was all jacked up and I was very compressed in the small space. And while I'm still in that small space, I, I have upgraded a lot of my gear so that I can utilize that space better. I've tried to learn a little bit more to, to make what I'm doing a little more professional looking. So this is like, and I've written down, this is like the fourth or fifth time I've recorded this video, but we might as well just go ahead and say it's been the sixth time because today I was set up to record the video and then realized I had to go to the grocery store and on the way to the grocery store, on the way back from the grocery store, I saw this. Yeah, well, the wasteland's got its own goal in the sea. Oh, what's that? Thou shalt get sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time. <laughs> So anyway, I went and did that and then I had to record some other video and now I'm recording this video for the first time at like eight o'clock at night instead of the maybe two or three o'clock that I wanted to start. So why am I here now? Why have I got all this set up and, and ready to go and looking professional and everything? Well, it's there because I have a new book to promote. If you follow me on social media, you will probably have seen the announcement I think I made it last November or something, uh, about a new novel. Uh, I even had a title and the cover reveal, and I expected it will be out soon-ish. Um, you're gonna see the cover over here. That new novel is called Hiss Whistle Dead, and it is an experiment for me in a couple of different ways. It is written as a novel long enough, just like just under about 60,000 words. And it's set in my sci-fi near future urban fantasy cyberpunk series, The Bridge Chronicles. It is not a direct sequel to my last novel in the series, which is called Paycheck Euphoria. And I'll show the cover up here. As always, links will be in the description to buy all these books and such. This book, His Whistle Dead, does not focus on Artemis Bridge, who's the main character of The Bridge Chronicles series, if you didn't know. It's kind of a side novel. And, you know, you don't have to read this one to, for the series to make sense. Uh, it is totally standalone, although again, there's some, it does tie into specific books and I'll get into that in a minute. But I wanted to utilize a character that I'd featured before in uh, my short story collection, Tales from the Bridge Chronicles, volume one. Cover, links. That character is Shell, short for Shelley Jonas. Uh, from the story, The Excavators. An excavator in the Bridge Chronicles universe is sort of this digital archeologist. They're a hacker hired to break into the digital accounts of the recently deceased to build this picture of the deceased's digital life. So in the universe of the Bridge Chronicles, probate courts will use officially sanctioned global net excavators. They have their own army of them. Um, or they will use licensed private operators. 
but Shell is a freelance unlicensed excavator. So the courts don't recognize her work and technically she's committing crime. Official excavators will pack up all the digital assets of the deceased that they find so the courts can fully determine what goes to whom and you know the survivors if there's any taxes or debts or anything left over. The unlicensed kind of excavators like Shelley are hired by mistresses, ex-wives, estranged family members, or anybody who can't afford the official process or who don't want those assets known to the courts. They will unearth possibly buried treasure in the form of financial assets that the deceased might have hidden either to hide the relationship or because the money is, you know, is illegal. It's been made by illicit means. Now I say the novel is experimental partly because of how I'm going to release it. Rather than putting out the whole novel in one package at first, I'm going to be using the Kindle Vela format. I have a link in the description below that talks about the Vela. But to summarize, it's an intentionally episodic format that only Kindle users can access. My apologies to non-Kindle users, uh, but Kindle is really where 99.9% .9 of my sales come from. So I kind of have to favor that one, even though I really hate giving Amazon so much control over my literary output. Anyway, Vela users get to read the first three episodes for free. And if they want to continue, they have to purchase these tokens and the amount of tokens for each episode uh, is going to vary based on the length of the episode. Now, I have no idea if this is going to work or if anyone will spend so much as even a single token or even how much I'm going to get in royalties. It's my first shot using this format, but I like the episodic format and I think it's a great way to introduce myself in the Bridge Chronicle series to newer readers who might not even know that they'd like this series. Once I release all the episodes, I'm going to be collecting it into a novel sized ebook and paperback like I normally do. The episodic releases give me a chance to use this platform, specifically YouTube and videos, to kind of drill down on the series one episode at a time. To do that, I'm going to release one short video with each episode talking about the episode that just got released. Um, and fair warning, the videos will probably have some spoilers. I'm going to try to label it with like a border or something when it is spoilery. We'll see how that works out. Originally, the novel was written as 11 chapters slash episodes in all. Uh, I clocked in around 50,000 words. I thought that was good enough. Um, did all the edits, edited the videos of each episode, and then I go to put the content into the Vela system and find out that there actually is a hard limit on the number of words per episode. It's 600 words to 5,000 words. The original write-up that I was reading on the Vela when I started uh, started to decide to use the format didn't really make it clear that it was a hard limit. So when I originally wrote these, I treated that more as kind of a guideline, not a rule. I'm not entirely sure how many, but it, I think it turned out that at least four of the episodes were longer than 5,000 words. I think it might have actually been like six episodes, which means I either had to go in and whittle down those episodes under to under 5,000 words or split them into smaller episodes. But that also meant I had the opportunity to rewrite almost the entire novel. Yay! Thanks, Amazon! Now, to be fair to Amazon, which they totally don't deserve, that did actually give me a little bit of freedom to both tighten up the language that I was using in some places uh, in some of the episodes, as well as expand on some parts of the narrative in other places. I actually ended up doing both of those things. A uh, few of the episodes I whittled down, maybe 400, 500 words. But for the ones that were over 6,000 words, I knew I, I had to keep them around the same length. There wasn't anything I could cut out of that or I couldn't cut enough of that. So I just split them into two chapters. Thus, 11 episodes chapters became 15, which of course meant that 12 videos, including this one, needed to become 16 videos, as well as the 17th when I just did one for the, the introduction to the channel. Not entirely sure when, when this is gonna get released, but I've set the release for one week from today, whatever day this is being put out. I think I'm going to start, I'm going to put them out on Wednesdays.
if I know for sure, I'll put it up as text on the screen over here when I, when I get it done. If you subscribe to the channel though, like I mentioned earlier, not only will you get notified about those 15 other videos being released, but that video's release will be a sign that, hey, the next episode is out on Amazon, so go get it. All right, so that's a good reason to subscribe, right? Thanks for watching, and if you would, please like the video and leave a comment below. Uh, we have to appease the almighty algorithm after all. Um, I'm going to leave you with one final bit of content. Another thing I created that took, that made it take longer, but was important for marketing, I thought. It is part of the music video by Death and Logic for Who Am I? I'm Gary Ballard, and these have been my thoughts. It all made sense, I'd found my place